A peace agreement has been reached between Armenia and Azerbaijan to end hostilities over the disputed Nagorno-Karabakh region. The deal itself was brokered by Russia. In Armenia, though, it's been seen as a humiliating defeat, with furious protesters storming the government building. Earlier I spoke with our correspondent, Igor Zdarnov, who reported for us from the front line during the conflict. He gave me details of this new deal. During our time there, we've witnessed so much bloodshed, so much carnage, tears in the eyes of mothers and fathers who lost their children, who did know the fates of their children. And there have been a number of attempts at, you know, ending this conflict, at bringing, at bringing the sides to a resolution. But uh, this time, it seems, this conflict is as close to its end as ever. It has been brokered in Russia, and Vladimir Putin is the main guarantor of uh, this deal. We presume that the agreements reached will create the necessary conditions for a long-term and full settlement of the crisis around Nagorno-Karabakh on a fair basis and in the interests of the Armenian and Azerbaijani peoples. Uh, with every peace deal comes hope. Realistically, though, there have been previous peace deals. They usually don't last. What reason is there to believe that this one will, uh, will fare better? That's a very va valid question, because uh, during other peace deals that were brokered by both Russia, France and the United States, uh, the documents, uh, they were rather brief, just to, down to a few paragraphs of text, uh, rather vague, saying that just the sides should stop shooting at each other and maybe exchange prisoners of war and uh, bodies of, for, of the fallen soldiers. This time, there's much more substance and uh, it's much more in-depth when it comes to this particular document. So according to it, the ceasefire uh, came in place at 1 a.m. local time uh, today on November 10th. So again, according to this document, Azerbaijan gets to keep those territories that it has already captured from the Armenian forces. And also on top of that, Armenia will have to turn over more provinces, which, which it technically has under control now, they will have to turn them over to Azerbaijan as well over the next few weeks. Also, the Russian peacekeeping force will be deployed to patrol the front line and the corridor between Armenia and uh, the capital of Nagorno-Karabakh, uh, Stepanakert. Uh, also, the sides will have to exchange prisoners of war. There have been some reports, somewhat corroborated by the Azerbaijani president, Ilham Aliyev, that Turkey will also be patrolling the front lines, but uh, there's nothing uh, or said about it in the document itself. So the document obviously was signed by both leaders of Armenia and Azerbaijan. Here's how they reacted to it. I saw the decision has been taken as a result of analysis of the military situation and based on the assessments of people who are the most familiar with the military situation. For my part, I would like to say that I'm very glad that today we have sealed the deal to settle a years-long conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan and put an end to the occupation of Azerbaijan land. And while I can't stress enough how sensitive, we can't even begin to imagine how sensitive the issue of Nagorno-Karabakh for both Armenians and Azerbaijanis. So it's no surprise that crowds have gathered both in both capitals, and, but uh, the mood is strikingly different, of course, because in Baku, people are celebrating. It's uh, something they've been waiting for more than for about 30 years, and finally they think that they've won this war. This is what they're celebrating. The mood is very, very different in Yerevan, the capital of Armenia. People there, to say they are heartbroken, that would be a severe understatement. They are devastated and they are angry, very, very angry, mostly at the government. Uh, they believe that they've thrown in the towel and that they're giving up on Nagorno-Karabakh and that's something they don't want to see. They've stormed uh, the uh, building of the parliament. Uh, they also attacked a motorcade, the motorcade of the speaker of the parliament. They dragged him out of the car and uh, he's been beaten up. He's in a hospital, in fact, right now. So they see it as a concession. They see it as unacceptable. But even fighters in Nagorno-Karabakh they have released a call on the rioters in the capital who are also demanding the resignation of the incumbent government, of uh, Nikol Pashinyan's government. Uh, those fighters in Nagorno-Karabakh, they have called on the rioters to calm down, 
and uh, they've said that the war was in Nagorno-Karabakh, uh, not in Yerevan. So if they wanted to help, or if they want to help now, they should have come to this disputed region and helped out on the front lines. But, well, with, the, with this ceasefire, it might be a, a little too late for that. So, again, it is really difficult to, un to overestimate how painful this is for the Armenians, especially if we recall uh, all the statements made by the foreign ministers, by the, uh, ministers of de by the ministers of defense and their spokespeople, because during this whole conflict, even as we were there, uh, they were trying to calm down people. The information that they were giving to us, to journalists, they were saying, look, you should have faith in our army, in our armed forces. There's, uh, no, there will be no other outcome in this war, they were saying, other than our victory. So they were promising victory extensively. They were saying that they will, even as Azerbaijan was advancing, they were saying that we will, we will turn the tide, we will, be, we will go on a counteroffensive, and uh, they, that's what they were promising people. So a lot of people believed them, and now that's why they think that they've been, that they've been abandoned and betrayed. Well, Igor talked there about the dissatisfaction with the deal in Armenia. Let's hear more about that now from local journalist Joe Nersesian. I'm here in, uh, in uh, the Republic Square in Yerevan. Um, so uh, about, about an hour and a half ago, two hours ago, when the statement started to come out on, on Twitter um, uh, and Facebook, uh, people started to, to gather here and uh, the government building just behind me was broken into. Um, protesters smashed the glass, went inside, pulled out flags, um, and within half an hour, there was about, there was, there was thousands of people here. Um, they've, they've called for, they were looking for, they've, been, they've told me they were looking for Pashinyan, and they were trying to find him. Police kind of st tried to stop them at first, but then just stepped aside and allowed the protesters inside the building, um, where they kind of pulled apart the building, a lot, of, a lot of smashing glass, some scuffles breaking out, quite a few fights between protesters who, who obviously want different things. Um, something happening again behind me, um, but there's, there's, there's kind of scuffles all over the place between protesters, between some police, but mostly police are stepping back and allowing people to express their, their anger. There's been constant movement of protesters between the building and, and the public square, which is just behind the camera here. Um, and uh, I, um, uh, it's bit worth bearing in mind that it's, it's about 4 a.m. in the morning here. This, the news kind of filtered out uh, in the middle of the night, and um, people people didn't keep people away. They, they cars were screaming past me uh, as I walked to, to the Republic Square, um, and, and the square is still packed now. Uh, two, three hours later, we discuss this new deal with a panel of guests. The key um, uh, point. Uh, that, <clears throat> that makes it uh, uh, definitive is the signature of Armenia's uh, prime minister uh, and his admission that it is a very uh, difficult uh, decision to make. This will have lasting power. Now, what the fallout will be, not so much for the Azerbaijan, the Azeri side, but for the Armenian side politically at the internal level, that's another matter. You cannot uh, get involved into a war and then not achieve anything because he brings absolutely nothing um, back from this conflict. You know, maybe some Armenians will look at this as a, as a negative. Uh, maybe some Azerbaijanis may look at it as, an, as a negative as well. In general, I, I think the prime minister was very brave and courageous in taking this step. And I think... Um, both sides need to look at this from a long-term perspective. I understand it's difficult for Armenia especially, but uh, I think it's a positive step forward. Uh, and it seems much more stable, I think, we'll see out of this for, versus the prior ceasefires and stuff. And I understand how difficult it is, but I think for the region, it's much better to end this hostility, because otherwise, I don't know if I could see an uh, end to this uh, in the long term. In terms of the end of the matter, I don't think this solves the overall question of the Nagorno-Karabakh and what its status will be if, for the short term, a ceasefire holds, as the previous ones have not, and with the introduction of Russian peacekeepers, that helps to stabilize the situation. Yes, that, that possibly could work, but there is still a lot of political wreckage 
left over that would have to be negotiated for a long-term solution to what is the status of Nagorno-Karabakh or Artsakh, as the Armenians call it, and also the other areas surrounding Nagorno-Karabakh that connect Armenia uh, to Nagorno-Karabakh that I, I don't think even the Armenians are saying they don't consider part of Azerbaijan, but they've been holding since uh, the, the early 1990s.